Hello, and welcome back to Podfinder. My name is Philip, and I'm here to talk about Pathfinder 2nd Edition. This is part of a series I'm producing covering the various deities in the Pathfinder role-playing game and its setting, the World of Galarian. Last time, I celebrated Halloween with a discussion of the Whispering Tyrant, Tarbaphon, and the cult which brought him to power, the Whispering Way. Today, I'll be hopping back into a discussion of Pathfinder's gods with my first Tian deity, Hei Feng, the Tengu god of storms. Before that, though, if you enjoy this video and want to hear more Pathfinder lore, consider subscribing or commenting below. With that out of the way, let's move on to the rundown. Hei Feng is the Duke of Thunder, a temperamental god of wind, rain, lightning, and thunder. His name is typically pronounced Hei, like what a farmer harvests, and Feng, like Feng Shui. Though he is widely recognized and worshipped throughout Tian Sha, he is not particularly well-liked by mortals or his fellow deities. His mood is that of the weather, unpredictable and violent, but quick to change and as likely to be wicked and vengeful as kind and generous. His areas of concern are storms, the sea, sailors, and tengu, though he also has a soft spot for the arts, and especially those arts which could be considered low-brow. Outside of his dedicated clergy, he is most commonly worshipped by tengu, sailors, ronin, and those who live lives depending on rainfall or the sea. Heifeng's depictions across Tian Sha are remarkably consistent. He is always shown as a tengu man in simple, loose-fitting clothing. His feathers are the black of smoke, calling to mind the structures his lightning has burned to the ground, while his eyes glow with intense electric light. He is always shown with his signature nine-ring broadsword, either in hand or nearby. This blade is said to crackle with electric energy, and the nine rings, which hit each other as he moves, make cracks and clangs as loud as thunder itself. Hei Feng is usually shown in the company of his closest friends, the Four Counts, but I'll be discussing them in more detail a bit later. Hei Feng makes his home in the Maelstrom, as befits a god of storms. He lives in the Pavilion of Ten Thousand Explosions near Yanjira. Here, islands of sharp black stone pierce the frothing dark sea, while torrential rains pour from above. Lightning crackles forever in a tumultuous sky, while thunder roars with intensity which would shake the foundations of the material plane. Hei Feng lives here with his followers and friends, taking joy in the chaos and celebrating by shooting off fireworks. Devout followers of Hei Feng, called Hei Fengans, are often as temperamental as their god, with fiery tempers and wandering spirits. Though the Duke of Thunder isn't a god of travel, many of his followers are travelers by nature. They might make their livings as sailors who brave the stormy seas, relying on their god's patronage to protect them. Alternatively, they might be wandering, self-reliant warriors, who serve as mercenaries or even occasionally bandits. They are generally proud and bristle at insults, real or perceived. Though they aren't often bullies, they are willing to use force to get what they want, or more often, punish those who wrong them. Hei Fungans are notoriously unreliable, and even those who are benevolent will rarely stand up to face problems until the last possible moment. Followers tend to live in the moment and enjoy the pleasures of the material world, particularly alcohol, parties, and fireworks. Despite their generally violent tempers, they are known for their willingness to apologize for their actions once their violent attitudes subside. Heifeng has little interest in producing a proper holy text, as he finds the formality of the idea to be both boring and ultimately pointless. He chooses instead to allow his straightforward edicts and the tales of his great deeds communicate his teachings to his followers. Followers do, however, have one firmly defined text to which they can refer. Heifeng is especially close to four individuals. The Four Counts. These beings, the counts of wind, rain, thunder, and lightning, serve as his heralds when needed, but are more accurately described as his closest friends. 
The five companions have sworn the fourfold oath of eternal camaraderie, as a sign of their friendship and willingness to stand together against even the greatest of foes. The words of this oath are well known by the Church of Haifeng, and many followers treat the oath itself as a holy text and a pillar of the faith. This emphasis on loyalty to one's allies has allowed many Haifengans to carve out a place for themselves in a society which might otherwise treat them as unwelcome brutes. Many followers become adventurers, or join up with a small mercenary company. While they might still be unreliable and even destructive to those outside of their chosen groups, their sense of loyalty is treasured by their allies, and their oaths of friendship are seen as nearly ironclad. Formal temples to Haifeng take two notable forms. The first is fairly straightforward. These are permanent structures which resemble traditional pagodas or shrines. They are decorated with a lightning motif and are carefully constructed to include numerous lightning rods. Haifeng takes the constructions of these buildings as a challenge and delights in hurling lightning at them. A properly constructed temple of this type is expected to survive hundreds of lightning strikes per year, especially in the mountainous regions where they are common. The second type of temple is less prominent, but no less impressive. These temples begin as an unadorned metal frame, which is carefully grounded. The rest of the building is constructed around this frame and is specifically made up of highly flammable material. Charms inscribed with prayers are used extensively in the structure, and even the walls themselves might be painted or inked with prayers or oaths intended for Haifeng. Once the building is complete, priests or other devout followers will enter and await a storm, which is almost certain to hit quickly. As lightning inevitably strikes the structure, the flammable material is consumed in fire, leaving the metal frame to conduct the electricity into the ground and protect those inside. These temples feed Haifeng's need for destruction in a controlled way, and written prayers consumed in these ritual fires are known to reach the gods' ears. Shrines to Haifeng are much less formal, and are common throughout seaside communities in Tian Sha. They take the form of simple constructions of stone, painted white with a view of the sea and sky. They are commonly decorated with pinwheels, wind chimes, or other items meant to interact with the breeze. Statues are common as well, both of Haifeng himself and of his four counts. The Church of Haifeng is loosely structured throughout most of Tian Sha, and even more so in broader Galarian. His faith is practiced most strongly in Huanggat, Tang Mai, Goka, Minkai, Minata, Wanshou, and Jidao. Here, the faith is most commonly held by Tengu, who see the Duke of Thunder as their patron deity. In places where the Tengu community is large, formal temples likely exist. Priests at these temples might organize themselves by seniority or relative strength, though even that may vary from location to location. In coastal communities especially, these priests will be valued for their prayers for good weather for merchant or fishing vessels. In places where the number of worshippers is low, priests might instead exist as wandering warriors or hermits who intervene in local affairs as they see fit. These types of followers have a tendency to raise all manner of hell and leave destruction in their wake, even when they intend to be helpful. It's also worth noting that the faith of Haifeng also maintains a presence in the shackles, due to the high concentration of Tengu in the region. All that being said, the true heart of Haifeng's faith on Galarian is Quan Lai, the ancestral home of the Tengu in south-central Tian Sha. In Quan Lai, Tengu represent a plurality of the population, and in many parts make up the local ethnic majority. This puts the Church of Haifeng in a position of extreme cultural importance. On a national scale, Haifeng's teachings instead manifest as a culture which prizes celebration and downtime, but which also values freedom and is willing to violently and viciously protect itself when necessary. The clans, which make up the government, still suffer from Haifeng's prideful temper, but even that has cooled in recent years. Haifeng's exact origins are unknown but he has been a member of the Celestial Court, the ruling body of gods which manage Tiana affairs in heaven, since the court's founding. The earliest legend regarding the Duke of Thunder both illustrates his irrational temper and explains the origins of his association with storms. 
One day, an errant breeze caused Hei Feng to sneeze. This was, apparently, hilarious, as it caused the other gods to laugh. Embarrassed, Hei Feng declared war on the wind itself, causing all manner of chaos. This finally ended when Ye Jing, the punisher of the gods, hurled Hei Feng into the sea to quench his fury. Thoroughly chastised, Hei Feng took on the domains of sea and sky in penance. Of course, Hei Feng's temper never truly went away. His anger still flares intensely when stirred, driving him to cause all manner of damage. Local legends and stories in Tian Sha claim that storms, particularly those on or near the sea, are caused by his sudden fury. Still, Hei Feng has been known to feel remorse for his actions and offer at least token gestures of apology. Children in seaside communities who lose their parents to storms are known to be blessed with fair weather and full fishing nets when they set out to sea, and such blessings are seen as signs of penance from the Duke of Thunder himself. Still, a full fishing net or safe travels are small comforts when compared to the loss of one's parents. You might be tempted to think that Hei Feng is immune to any meaningful consequences for his actions, but this isn't entirely true. His actions have caught up with him once or twice, and one such instance occurred within the last few centuries. For a long time in his history, the Duke of Thunder had a duchess. His wife was Lady Jingxi, the lesser goddess of daybreak, twilight, and poetry. Lady Jingxi put up with her husband's foul temper and penchant for drink for millennia, accepting his token apologies in good faith, and always hoping he would change his ways. Finally, though, she had had enough, and left the Duke of Thunder to wallow in his drunkenness alone. She is supported in this effort by Shellen, who sees their marriage as a sham, and recognizes that there is no longer any love between them. I should clarify that none of the lore depicts the Duke of Thunder as explicitly abusive, merely inattentive and unloving. Not that neglect isn't a form of abuse. The situation with Lady Jingqi is easily the greatest consequence which Hei Feng has ever faced, even including his dousing at the hands of Ye Jing. Interestingly, though Hei Feng is credited as the patron deity of the Tengu, he doesn't appear to have created them, at least according to the Tengu's own myths. Tengu mystics claim that their people once descended to Galarian on shooting stars from the heavens. They landed upon mountaintops, where they then made their homes. These were the mountains of Quan Lai. This place was beset by constant storms and fierce winds, leading them to take up the worship of Hei Feng as a deity of storms. They also took to the worship of other deities of travel and nature, most commonly Desna. Even to this day, Tengu have an affinity for nature deities and primal spirits. On the topic of Desna, that takes us nicely to the revolution in Quan Lai. In the days of Imperial Lung Hua in the center of Tian Sha, Quan Lai was seen as a rebellious and lawless province of the empire. The leaders of Lung Hua saw the Tengu homeland as a dumping ground for political prisoners, a place they could send undesirables instead of killing them and making martyrs of them. This had the unintended consequence, however, of putting the most dissident members of imperial society in one place, and put them alongside an oppressed ethnic group with a penchant for violent outbursts. A stroke of genius move, this was not. In 7106 IC, the equivalent of 4606 AR, which is the year Aroden died, the clans of Tengu and their myriad allies rose up as one in the Feather and Starlight Rebellion. This rebellion was so named for the two largest rebel factions in the group, the churches of Heifeng and Desna. Even after the rebellion, these two faiths maintain a strong hold in Quan Lai, though the faiths of Sun Wukong and Lady Jingqi are popular as well. As you might expect from his temperament, Heifeng has a mixed reputation at best among his fellow deities. In the heavenly court, he is often seen as a drunken brute. His love of cheap entertainment, as well as his frequent outbursts, lead his fellow deities to look down upon him and treat him with a level of disdain. Still, many recognize his martial skill and agree that he serves an important role on the court. The Duke of Thunder rolls his eyes at the whole court and only begrudgingly performs his duties. He especially enjoys needling deities of law, 
in particular Abadar, Phrasma, and Shizuru, though this is more for entertainment than actual animosity. Feng yearns for the return of Lady Jingchi to his side and laments his own behaviors which drove her away. That being said, Feng is blind to the fact that his love for Lady Jingchi was never true, or that he was not a caring or attentive husband. This blindness does not impact his edicts regarding the lady, however. All followers of Feng are required to be tremendously respectful and kind toward followers of Lady Jingchi, and are always on their best behavior in her temples. It is unlikely that Feng will ever truly change his ways, and so he and Lady Jingchi will likely remain separated for a very long time. The Duke of Thunder's closest allies are his four retainers, the Counts of Wind, Rain, Thunder, and Lightning. This group of five are more than mere friends. Each of the five has, as mentioned, sworn the fourfold oath of eternal camaraderie, ensuring that they will always have one another's back for all time. The origins of the four counts have not been detailed by Paizo, but each of them is ancient and has worked alongside the Duke of Thunder for millennia. Sun Wukong and Hei Feng maintain a tumultuous relationship. The similarities between the two gods allow them to find much common ground, but also lead them to butt heads frequently and violently. They always reconcile, however, and frequently contribute to one another's mischief or irreverence. The only deities who have earned Feng's lasting ire are Fumeyoshi and Lao Shu Po. He sees such deities as cowards for their willingness to sneak and skulk in the shadows, rather than indulging their evil tendencies in the open. Evil deities who act openly are far less hated, because Feng can at least respect their courage. For players who might be interested in playing characters who follow Feng, here are a few useful details. For those using the alignment rules, Feng is a chaotic neutral deity, and will accept clerics of any chaotic alignment. His edicts are to follow your passions, to make token attempts to apologize to those you have wronged, to respect the power of the sea and sky, and to encourage flashy entertainment. Conversely, to fake friendship with those you despise, to disrespect Feng or Lady Jingchi, or to ignore an affront to yourself, Feng, or Lady Jingchi, are all anathema to Feng. Clerics of Feng who perform a sanctification can choose unholy, though Tengu clerics may also choose holy. The Duke of Thunder's domains are air, indulgence, lightning, and water. He also has the alternate domains of destruction and travel. His holy symbol is a dark cloud with a golden lightning bolt striking downward. Feng's sacred colors are a bit unclear. I think they're gray and gold, but I haven't been able to confirm this. His followers tend to dress in bright colors, though dark blues or grays accented by bright gold or white are most common. Such fashion is intended to invoke the idea of lightning striking in a stormy sky. Other followers might dress in a wide variety of colors, patterns, and textiles, owing to their wandering lifestyles. The clothing of most followers is rumpled or travel-worn, due to the unwillingness of many followers to put in the necessary effort to maintain it in pristine condition. One curious tradition among some Heifungans is the tendency to favor a wide variety of metal trinkets, from buckles to necklaces to pins, which they arrange on their bodies in a way intended to conduct electricity. This might lead some followers to become singed when in the presence of electrical spells, but this is taken as a point of pride among the faithful. This trend in personal decor might also reflect the noise made by a nine-ring broadsword, and be another way to call to mind the clanging of lightning during a storm, or the ringing of a wind chime. Feng's sacred weapon is the Zhu Huan Do, or the nine-ring broadsword, a curious weapon which, in the real world, is more decorative and demonstrative than functional. In Pathfinder, however, the sword is entirely functional, and the rings serve to add weight and momentum for successive strikes. Among followers of Hei Feng, the rings might also be slammed together to create loud crashes reminiscent of lightning and thunder. The weapon is common among priests, and even lay followers will often carry miniaturized versions as necklaces, which they treat as good luck charms. 
Entertainers in Tian Sha are also known to carry such charms, in the hopes that their performances might attract Hei Feng's attention and favor. Other weapons found among the faithful are most often swords of Tian design, including the iconic katana. Of special note are the Tengu Gale Blade and the Thunder Sling, both of which are ancestral weapons of the Tengu peoples. Of course, the most common property runes which Hei Fungans might purchase are the Shock and Thundering runes. Hei Feng's favored animal is the crow, a bird reminiscent of his own appearance, and the appearance of the Tengu who are his people. Other birds are likely found among his followers as well, especially those which live near water and feed on aquatic animals, such as gulls, cormorants, or some types of falcons or hawks. Creatures with an affinity for electricity, such as the electric eel, might be another interesting choice as well. As mentioned earlier, the Church of Haifeng is expressed differently in Quan Lai than elsewhere on Galarian. In Quan Lai, and in large port cities around Tian Sha, cloistered clerics are likely more common, due to the value they provide to sailors with their mastery of weather magic. The same could likely be said for storm druids, at least those with a calmer disposition. In other countries, war priests who have taken to their gods more militant teachings are likely more common. The church likely also appeals to fighters or swashbucklers with a flair for the dramatic or entertaining. Tempest oracles are likely drawn to the faith, as might be air- or water-based kineticists. Finally, Hei Feng's attraction for plays, drinking songs, and humor means that bards who cater to these lowbrow forms of entertainment will easily find acceptance among his followers. I should also make mention of the pirate archetype for those followers who have taken to the seas. Tengus make up a large portion of Haifeng's faithful, which makes sense given his status as their patron deity. In Quan Lai, Haifeng and Desna are the two most prominent deities, meaning anyone in that nation has a high degree of exposure to their faith. This includes Kitsune, humans of various ethnicities, and Yaogwai, as well as merfolk and Athamarus in the nation's waterways and ports. Nephilim are common here as well, as might be the elemental scions of water or wind. All that being said, many nations in Tian Sha host at least a small number of the Duke of Thunder's faithful, so any ancestry or heritage native to the continent might be exposed to his faith at some point. I should also add that any ancestry in the Shackles might be exposed to his faith due to the presence of Tengu in the region. Devout followers of Hei Feng have a lust for life, which few religious communities can match. They love to celebrate and indulge in the pleasures of the world, though more than a few take these behaviors to the point of excess. They love loud and boisterous entertainment, and frequently light off fireworks during times of celebration. Drink is common among his faithful, especially the famous cloudless lightning cocktail of Quan Lai. Still, despite their penchant for indulgence, they can make for loyal friends and allies on occasion, and rare is the person willing to stand against a Haifungan in combat without a second thought. For GMs looking to integrate Haifung and his followers into a campaign, here are some ideas. Haifung has no specific herald, and instead entrusts this duty to his four retainers when necessary. His four retainers are... Bao Feng, the Count of Wind, who manifests as a draconic protean surrounded by howling winds. Qi Yu, the Count of Rain, who manifests as a white-feathered Tengu woman with sorcerous powers. Kai Shun, the Count of Thunder, who manifests as an agathion in the form of a tiger whose only visible features are his stripes and eyes. And Li Xia, the Count of Lightning, who manifests as a white nine-tailed kitsune cloaked in electricity. Each of these servitors has their own personality quirks, meaning they might deliver messages from Haifeng in myriad ways. Good weather is thought to be a sign of Haifeng's favor, as are reliable tides and calm seas. By contrast, sudden storms are seen as signs of his fury, as are torrential rains or long droughts. The political situation in Quan Lai is tense, to say the least, and presents a rich backdrop for adventures and campaigns. Historically, Quan Lai has been invaded by their northern neighbor Wan Shou twice, and a third invasion is considered inevitable by many. 
To protect from this pending threat, Councillor Wanami Kako is constantly seeking new technology to develop effective border defenses. These include new black powder devices imported from neighboring or even far away lands. These new technologies must be tested, however, and these tests must be conducted in secret, so agents from Wanshou don't discover these preparations and enact their invasion earlier than expected. Additionally, internal politics in Quanlai are fraught in their own way. Lady Sutarai Gongen directs the efforts of the ruling Sevenfold Council and wields tremendous influence among the various clans and religious groups in Quan Lai. She is opposed in many ways by the Sunderstorm Covenant, a sect of zealots who seek to establish the Church of Heifeng as a state religion. This is hastened along by the warrior Suzume Kenko, a Tengu who encourages the Covenant to act with haste so they might overreach and become discredited. A group of politically or technologically savvy PCs could easily make a name for themselves in these circumstances. On a smaller scale, a party containing a Heifungan priest or druid might be hired on as guides or guards for a seafaring journey. Priests of the Duke of Thunder are commonly hired to bless ships before they set out on long journeys, and a particularly nervous merchant might similarly employ such a priest among his retinue of bodyguards. This would be an excellent opportunity for a GM to draw PCs into a campaign which spans a wide geographic area, allowing them to show off the fantastic world-building Paizo has done in the Tian Sha region and beyond. Finally, Heifeng's teachings lead to followers of all stripes, and commonly to ones who are far from benevolent. Such followers could make for interesting and conflicted NPCs with whom the PCs could interact in a variety of ways. A powerful priestess of Heifeng might be antagonistic to lower-level PCs and might even fight them if they encounter her while she's on a bender. This could present the PCs with a challenging boss fight, especially if the PCs need the priestess for plot reasons and therefore can't kill her outright. When she comes to her senses, the priestess would likely be apologetic to the PCs, though the methods by which she expresses that might appear dubious at best. Even if she is willing to help the PCs with whatever task they request of her, she would likely always be a source of some tension, due to these self-destructive habits encouraged by her faith. That said, this needn't always be the case. If PCs can win over such a character over time, they might even cause her to swear the famous fourfold oath of eternal camaraderie, earning them her friendship and loyalty for all time. Notably, such an NPC might be found all throughout Tian Sha, in the Shackles, in coastal communities throughout Galarian, or even in distant Arcadia, as the Tengu diaspora has been incredibly far-reaching. So, that's it. That's Hei Feng, the Duke of Thunder. Personally, I really enjoy him. So many nature deities are difficult to relate to on a human level, so it's refreshing to see one who is so fundamentally human, with all the flaws that entails. He certainly isn't a force for good in the universe, but that certainly doesn't make him any less entertaining, and he and his followers can stand up against evil with the best of them, at least when the mood strikes them, and when they're sober. Up next, I'll be taking another shot at the gods of Tian Sha. I really enjoyed my first dive into this pantheon, and I want to have another go at it. So, next time, I'll be back with a special combined episode, covering the mightiest and noblest deities in all the dragon empires, Shizuru and Tsukiyo.